Welcome to the first episode of our brand new channel, relaunch, channel, rebrand, whatever you want to call it, Nutrition Unpacked. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, that probably means you missed our last video, so shame on you, <laughs> but I'm going to help you out. Link in the description box and I'll make the link come out in a little boop de boop up there as well. Wow. That'll <laughs> fill you in on what 2023 is going to look like for us. It's a new year. It's new us. We're here with a new name and better than ever, hopefully. Yes, that's the goal. Shall we get into it? Let's do it. So for the next 28 days, we are gonna take on the paleo diet. You know, a lot of times we say a lot, but we don't actually do what we say. So we get to practice what we preach a little bit and really see what people are doing when it comes to some of these really common diets. So the paleo diet is an interesting one to start with. Absolutely. I'll be honest, the reason that I wanted to start with a paleo diet is because I felt like it would be the easier one to transition into, but I very quickly learned that I was mistaken, but we'll get into that <laughs> very soon. Let's first talk about how the paleo diet came about. It was developed by Dr. Lauren Cordain. Uh, he worked with a couple of other researchers named Dr. Eaton and Dr. Lindeberg. And basically Dr. Cordain, he ended up publishing a book in 2002 called The Paleo Diet. So some of the principles of the paleo diet, they've been around since the 1970s, but this book really brought it to the mainstream and kind of brought it to the masses and he really popularized it. Dr. Cordain is a doctor, but he's not a medical doctor. He has a bachelor's of health science and then a master's and a phd in exercise physiology so just to give some social context as i mentioned the ideas of you know kind of eating in a paleolithic way has been around since the late 1900s but it is this book that really made it very popular amongst the general public. Sometimes it's referred to as the caveman diet or the stone age diet. And we'll get into why or where this name comes from very soon. But according to the Harvard Chan School of Public Health, apparently it reached its peak popularity in 2014. And this is about right for me. I think it's been about the past 10 years or so that you've just been really hearing about paleo this, paleo that. Paleo has been around now for a good 10 years, but it's interesting that it took a little while to catch on from 2002 to 2014. And then the last like couple of decades, there's been so many more books on the topic. So books kind of going over the general principles, going over the, the evidence that may or may not be there, or kind of just the general rationale behind it, but also other resources like a gajillion cookbooks and guidances, like guidelines, resources on how to actually implement it in your life. There's all kinds of social media platforms devoted to the Paleolithic diet. There are even restaurants now that are like <laughs> devoted to having paleo foods. What's interesting though, and we'll get into this, but it seems like there isn't necessarily a lot of consistency in terms of what is allowed, what's not allowed. Some people have their own take on it. I mean, the actual official paleo diet creator, I mean, he has his own, I guess, principles, mm -hmm. but there are definitely other variations, even like going on r slash paleo on Reddit, people have like, well, like different views on like, well, it's not technically allowed, but like, I think it's okay <laughs> because of X, Y, Z. Yeah, no, it's made it a little confusing, I think, for us trying to figure out exactly what are we supposed to be doing for these next 28 days. And I'm sure we'll have our own take on it too. The name paleo, um, short for paleolithic, or as Rabina mentioned, you know, they call it the caveman diet. It's basically meant to be a estimation of what our ancestors would have eaten. So the thought there is that we haven't really evolved fast enough to be eating certain foods, so we should be eating how we were evolved to eat. Exactly. I mean, when you think about it, I think a, our food environment is very, very different. Like, I think in the last 50 to 100 years, our food environment has changed so much. And most of us, probably the, a significant part of our diet, the, it involves foods that probably weren't even around over 100 years ago. And not to mention the globalization of food is foods that would have only been available at certain times of year in certain places are now available all the time. Think of bananas. Bananas are a tropical fruit and they do have a season, but when you go to the grocery store, there's always bananas there. So our food systems just really, really changed. So I think the crux of this diet is going back to what they consider the basics and what people maybe would have eaten way back when. 
And the rationale or the assumption is if we eat in that way, then that's probably better for our bodies and that we're likely to be healthier. And you know, like that tracks in a way. And when we look at all these chronic diseases and these poor health outcomes, a lot of these have only really come up in the last 50 or so years. So some of those changes to our environment in general and specifically our food environment definitely have had a big impact on our health. And to be fair, this kind of rationale is kind of used in other diets too, which is interesting because I think the carnivore diet also kind of uses some of the same ideas that that's how our early ancestors ate and therefore that's the best for our digestive system, our bodies. In a future video, I think we'll go into kind of more of the evidence behind that and unpack that a little bit further. That being said, so what will we be eating over the next few weeks? The paleo diet very much encourages a lot of whole foods. So vegetables, fruits, fish, lean meats, some nuts and seeds, eggs, while really discouraging or kind of encouraging you to avoid or eliminate refined sugars, refined grains, added salt, processed foods in general, trans fats, added chemicals, oils from plants that are refined oils. So like no canola oil, I don't think. Um, I'm still kind of questioning. I don't know if I can have uh, sunflower seed oil. Well, we'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure it out. I think yeah. it's easier to conceptualize it as the things you can eat than the things yeah. you can't because I was very confused. I still am, honestly. Yeah, and I think it's confusing because I think whatever the official principles are by this creator, Dr. Cordain, versus what's kind of is thought to be allowed or not allowed based on public discourse, there's so much inconsistencies. So I think we're gonna have to figure stuff out. And if we happen to mess up, don't hate us, just educate us. Yes. <laughs> Let us don't know. Don't hate, educate. Hate. Yes, <laughs> we're trying our best. We spent a lot of time reading about what the paleo diet is and trying to like break it down into something that makes sense to us and i have to say i'm still a little confused in some ways yeah. but what it really seems like this diet is focused on doing is cutting out processed foods and also cutting out anti-nutrients and you might be like what exactly is an anti-nutrient and so anti-nutrients are compounds that can prevent the absorption and use of nutrients and these are typically found in certain plant foods like legumes and seeds in this diet that's why there's a lot of foods that are not included is because they have anti-nutrients and also grains as well i believe have anti-nutrients so they're cut but it's weird because it seems like some people have exceptions to that like mm -hmm. looking on the paleo reddit page it seemed like a lot of people are quite open to including rice even though it's a grain because i guess it's not high in anti-nutrients mm -hmm. So I don't know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot to unpack here and we're definitely gonna get into it in a future video. Yeah, something else that's interesting is that dairy is not part of the paleo diet, but there's quite a few people who eat grass-fed butter, where if you go to the actual paleo people, the official paleo website, butter isn't to be included. So there is quite a few variations and there's people who take their own spin on things. Does that make any sense? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm like making mouth noises. I know. I literally, I was thinking the same thing. I need water so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I'm I'm sorry if we were making mouth noises, no. guys. <laughs> so that being said, what is our plan? So just a little peek behind the curtain. Today is January 22nd. Our plan is to do the paleo diet from January 23rd to February 19th. So that's four weeks. Exactly. Yes. How are you feeling about it? What are, what's your initial, like your biases, perceptions, et cetera? What are your initial thoughts, your gut reaction? My gut reaction, honestly, I'm a little intimidated. But like, it just seems like a very big diet overhaul mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm worried about how it's gonna go. I'm worried about yeah. how it's gonna go and also I'm still a little confused. I would say my initial biases and perceptions about the diet itself, actually I would say it comes across as a very healthful diet. I like the foods that they're mm -hmm. promoting. The foods that they're promoting are pretty nutrient dense. They're whole foods that are that tend to be satiating. And, you know, I think they're all foods that the general body of literature would suggest are health promoting. So I do appreciate that about the paleo diet. And one thing that I appreciated about it as well, like on the website, I think they, because they are going at it from like a health perspective, I think that is the angle. It's not meant, I don't think it's meant to be like a weight loss tool necessarily, mm -hmm. although I assume people are using it for that. 
they have they're kind of supportive of an 85 15 rule and you might have heard about that in kind of like the dieting world like the 80 20 rule and what that means is like 80 percent kind of strict adherence to whatever diet you're doing 20 percent leniency or more food freedom so they kind of support the 85 15 rule and i think that's kind of in keeping with what when you're talking about a healthy lifestyle it's not like one bag of candy every once in a while is actually going to do tangible damage to your health and i think they're acknowledging that that you can have space for those processed foods or alcohol or whatever and it's not necessarily going to be damaging it comes down to what your overall diet looks like for the most part so i appreciate that they're incorporating that and giving us that freedom at least oh yeah absolutely and i was actually a little surprised by that because you know i think when i think of some of these diets they seem very very strict but it's good to know that they do acknowledge the fact that you know having you know a pizza night once in a while isn't gonna completely change your health it's kind of you know the totality of the diet over the long term and that's what we see in the evidence so that's good one thing i am a little concerned about is the fact that we are cutting out some foods that i rely on a lot and that are also associated with beneficial health outcomes like for example legumes i love legumes lentils are my favorite love legumes whole grains what do i do about my bread that's gonna be <laughs> one of the hardest things for me and not to sound like the most millennial i refuse to go 28 days without avocado toast so <laughs> if you guys have recommendations for a paleo bread i'm on the hunt for paleo bread so if you have any brands or recipe i don't I, I don't know if i want to make bread if you have any recommendations for brands where it's not like 20 dollars a loaf tell me honestly i'm a little bit excited to be pushed out of my comfort zone a little bit because yeah. i think I might end up making some like new kinds of meals that I wouldn't haven't made before. You know, I like baking, so maybe I will venture into mm. a paleo bread. I don't know how good it's gonna be, Ooh, but if I make, make one together, oh, maybe good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's fun. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we can make a paleo bread. See how it goes. Yeah. My hopes aren't high, honestly. There are paleo bread flours on the market because mm -hmm. I was I was googling up a storm trying to find a paleo bread because I think it's gonna be hard. I'm mm, I'm gonna need my avocado toast with egg mm. on it. It's like but you can have the avocado egg. and the egg. Yes, but what will it be have on? You, have you seen the ones where you just like take an egg and put it in the avocado hole? That is not, not the same. But I will say they, as part of that eighty-five fifteen, the way they did the math, which checks out, is three meals a week is kind of a, you can do whatever you want. I'm a little bit sad about dairy as well because dairy is kind of my go-to yeah. when I'm like looking for something fast, like cheese or you know. Uh, I work for a protein companies, so I have a lot of whey protein. Before I go to the gym, I have whey protein. Um, Speaking of protein, I was telling you, I've been trying really hard to increase my protein intake over the last mm. couple of months, and I have been relying on like protein powders and protein bars and stuff, and I can tell you neither of those brands that I've been using are going to fly. Oh, I'm done. So. And also my morning cup of tea with a little bit of milk and sugar in it, I'm going to be I'm gonna be mm. sad for that. So mm. also, I can't seem to find an answer whether or not tea is paleo or not, but I'm going to say it comes from a leaf. I think so it should be I'm going to say it's allowed. Someone let me know if it's not, but I've seen a lot of paleo products that allow like monk fruit and stevia mm, and okay. stuff. So maybe you can use that to sweeten your tea. Okay. And I think like almond milk is allowed, Okay. but not the stuff with all the, the extra stuff. stuff. I said make your own almond milk that you have to yeah. do. Okay. Well, so. we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Well, are, are you going to do it? Like, are you going to give that up? Yep. You can do it. I'm gonna do it. I hope black tea in the mornings. I can do okay. that. I can do that. Okay. Or like, you know, like a herbal tea, maybe or like Earl Grey, mm. black. I can do that. That's okay. easy. What is kind of like the biggest challenge you're expecting? Are we? Did we just talk about that? Um, I can go into this a bit more. I think the biggest challenge is going to be like planning out my meals in advance because. Sometimes I just get home from work. And I'm like, what am I going to have? Pasta, you know, or something like that. So I think it's going to take a lot more deliberate planning of what I'm going to eat. Um, I'm going to have to be more on it with the grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. um, and also my willpower inhibition resistance is is not great. With the office snacks? With the office snacks. We have lots of office snacks. And like there's like chips and candy and even like, you know, crackers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I'm just gonna have to sit there and be like, oh, darn, no snacks for me. So 
That's that's not what I, I'm not looking forward to that at all. Yeah, I would yeah. pack a lot of fruits or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, because that hits the same spot as chips, right? We were talking about kind of just events or whatever or like just things that are coming up that we're trying to figure out how to navigate like valentine's day mm -hmm. like going out for dinner yeah we were gonna go celebrate with our friends like career success and like oh the alcohol question the alcohol question so yeah that was a that was interesting too i mean alcohol i guess is strictly like not paleo but they're like pretty supportive of that being part of your 15 percent. so but you know what good good timing for us because canada just came out with their new alcohol guidelines yes. so you know, it's going to help us stay on track for those alcohol guidelines. Not that I probably would. I mean, I don't drink that much. I don't drink that much anyway. It's going to really force me. As I said, my ability to say no to things is is not great. And now I have a reason that I have to. So it's going to stop me from snacking on like the candy in the office mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I am looking forward to that. What are you most looking forward to in this? Oh, like positive mm -hmm. changes? Mm -hmm. I think because... I'm gonna have to, I, I kind of mentioned this in the previous video, but I do tend to like get pretty into a groove and will often eat like very similar things day to day. So I think this is gonna force me to maybe like explore mm -hmm. new recipes and stuff. So I think that's good. Overall, I do think that it's probably gonna increase the helpfulness of my diet. I think so. Whole. So I went to Whole Foods yesterday to like I, I had I was like it's Whole Foods like they have all the stuff they have all the paleo keto this and that whatever stuff turns out there actually aren't a lot of like packaged I was looking mostly for like packaged easy snacks mm -hmm. and there actually aren't that many that are like paleo approved or paleo friendly so that was very disappointing but like I remember even I'm not gonna lie like a part like because like Rory kept saying like kept like saying the word paleo and I was like kind of embarrassed yeah so and having to like explain it to people I don't know. And also speaking of Rory, you have a husband. I do. Yeah. You live together. Uh-huh. He's not doing the paleo diet. Yes, that's correct. How do you think that's going to go? Do you think that's going to affect, you know, you guys' meals together? How's it going to affect your relationship? What's going to happen? I think it's going to be okay. Okay. I, I think we, we often eat different things anyway, mm -hmm. so I actually don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Going out to eat and like picking a restaurant that makes sense. Mm -hmm. for like what he wants and what I can have I think that might be harder yeah that might be tricky it's like sushi's a big one for us but again rice I don't know it's like some people say it's okay some people don't maybe I'm one of the people that says it's, it's okay. okay that's okay I feel like that's your paleo that's yeah, your paleo, like paleo prerogative yeah I think yeah. it's fine I think it's fine okay. the paleo the people on reddit seem to be fine. supportive yeah so yeah and you know like if you're going out for a meal if you got like meat and you just maybe didn't get like a side of rice or pasta yeah. or something like that you got a side of like sweet sweet potatoes are okay not sweet potato fries but sweet potato is fine but white potatoes aren't which is so weird that was weird that was kind of me. i feel like they made that up yeah and you know this diet is quite restrictive and you know anything any time where you're all overthinking about like the healthfulness of what you're eating and whether or not you you can eat does have an impact on your relationship with food and by uh, association in your relationship with your body. Are you worried about like any of that piece mm -hmm. of like, you know, I'm gonna have to be thinking so much about food that yeah. like, it just might make some food problems. I mean, I will tell you, I had a hard time getting a good night's rest last night. Cause I was like, oh my God, tomorrow's the last day. Mm -hmm. Cause there are like, there are foods that I genuinely enjoy that I'm not going to be able to have for, unless that's my designated one of three, <laughs> like freedom meals. Mm -hmm. Like, so that is kind of stressing me out. And the thing is like, I am the type of, I'm a very like rule follower kind of person. So like when there are rules, like I, I think it does take its, not take its toll, that's dramatic, but like it'll be on my mind like how I'm already think like I'm already thinking ahead like it's my nephew's birthday next weekend and I don't know there's gonna be a meal there's gonna be cake and I'm already kind of like I'm gonna be thinking about it all week like how mm -hmm. I'm gonna navigate that. like that's gonna end up taking a lot of mental space in my mind yeah right so yeah I but that's also just how my brain is like I you know I don't know I'm kind of scared of like losing weight on this diet because mm -hmm. it's like a lot of places where I get energy from so like you know i eat a lot of bread potatoes rice pasta i see that's like a lot of places where i get energy where it's not so satiating so i'm worried that like with exercise that i'm doing i'm gonna end up losing weight and i don't really yeah. want to right now so 
That's my concern. Liquid calories? Like, what's, what's, what is a liquid calorie you can have? Like a smoothie? Oh, yeah. Actually, it's a good idea. Smoothies. That's yeah. good. Okay. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. That's also something else that's giving me a little bit of anxiety is the amount of, like, planning because yeah. I'm a very unorganized kind of girl. And so I just feel like it might get to something where if I just, like, don't have anything to eat, I'm like, ah, I'll be freaking out a little bit. Can be your one of three. Your one of three. Yeah, yeah you have true. three free passes. I don't want to give myself too many free passes because I know if I mentally am like, oh, I get a free pass, I'm going to, yeah. like, do it more often. Yeah. I have a question mm -hmm. for you. How much do you think it really deviates from your current eating patterns? Hmm. It's funny because Rory was like, you know, I think you eat pretty paleo anyway. Like you eat like really like a lot of whole foods and blah, blah, blah. Like the only thing you would have to change is like this, this, and I'm like, yeah, so all my meals and snacks, yeah. Like I would say because paleo is like fruits and vegetables and meat, obviously, I eat fruits and vegetables and meat, but I think there's going to be a major component of every single thing that yes. I eat that's going to be different. And I also think my mindset of is going to be a lot more restricted because right now, if I go to the office and there's snacks and there's like donuts on Monday or whatever, I was like, oh, let me have a donut on Monday. Now I'm going to have to dribble like, oh, no, I can't have that. Or having to like read things and be like, what is in this? Can mm -hmm. I, can I have this? I think like I'd say probably about 50% of my diet is paleo, but yeah. it's like, every meal has a component that's not paleo. I'm excited for this vlogging component. That's yeah. that's one big major change that we're making is like actually doing the things and bring you guys along to, to do the things that we're doing. So yeah. I'm very excited and a little you're bit You're gonna nervous. have to keep reminding me tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow's day one. Day so one. you're gonna have to like in the morning be like, hey, vlog, vlog. I'll be like, hey. Yeah. Whatever will be, will be. be. What is that thing? Que sera, sera. Que sera, sera. Okay, we're gonna do it, and you're gonna come watch us. Come along with us. I'm so excited. Not really, but kind of nervous. <laughs> I've heard we'll learn a lot about ourselves. We'll too. learn a lot about ourselves. We'll learn about a lot, a lot about each other. Yeah. You guys will too. So give us your best tips too. Like, yeah. how do you navigate like going out to eat, or mm -hmm. like, do you have any brands like that are really good paleo products? Let us know. Let us know. Have you ever thought about going paleo if you're not already? Have you ever done it? Let us know what your experiences are. Any tips? Any reasons why you would or wouldn't be paleo? Let us know. We want to hear it all. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss one of our videos. And follow us on our Instagram and our TikTok. Thank you for watching. Bye.